Guys, do you know what hasn't happened in a while? Overwatch drama. So apparently people were upset with Overwatch again, because that's the only way we can actually enjoy this game is by being angry at it. Apparently there's, there's some issues. I don't know nothing about this, but regarding character ages, uh, Young Ye has done a video and I thought, you know, it'd be cool just to sit back, watch this and see why people are upset again, because I know they've released some character progression and stuff and the game is still just not where it needs to be. Uh, I've dipped off, as you guys know, on the channel. I've been doing mainly TF2 content because that's actually more fun, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, we'll dive in and have a look at this video. Overwatch 2, here we go again. Plenty of people are not happy with the state of this game. The user <laughs> score you can see, it's pretty low on the meta critic scale. 4. Then if we go to Steam, the user reviews are still overwhelmingly negative. Sitting at so we're at 182k. Wow, I thought we would have hit 200 by now, to be honest. You guys are dragging your feet a little bit. At 9%, that's both recent reviews and overall reviews, making it literally the worst user-reviewed game on Steam ever by a pretty significant margin yeah. as well. I've already covered why that is from Overwatch 2 not really making a significant leap from Overwatch 1 to its monetization. It's the same game. Like, nothing's changed. Like, they haven't done anything. <laughs> I think even the character progression stuff, and like the training, is all content we were meant to have at launch, and we didn't, because it's, it's Blizzard. And progression and reward systems and loops being a lot worse. And on top of that, you've got things like how the PvE was greatly diminished by how they cut the hero missions. They did retain the story missions, but even then, those are not... All that substantial, you know, like they offer some fun, you know, two hours or so worth of content. And there are going to be more story missions down the line, but you have to pay $15 for each uh, new set of story missions or pay some kind of fee for new story missions. So, you know, for this free to play experience, the fact that you have to pay after they cut uh, hero missions with the skill trees and all of the missions that would take advantage of your ability to kind of customize your heroes. And they did say at like before they launched that the PVE would be its own thing. So it, you would be buying like the experience. So it was going to cost money from the start. We all knew that what, when they went to the free to play model, we knew we'd have to pay for PVE, but it was supposed to be a one-time purchase. You get access to the PVE stuff, all the story missions, the skill tree when that was still a thing. And a lot of us were a bit like, eh, but we were okay with it. Now it's $15 for what two free missions and you do that every few seasons like that's ridiculous all of that's left a very sour taste in people's mouths now a big part of the attraction of overwatch is the characters their backstories and the overall lore and that's one area that stands to be compromised as well because blizzard recently decided to update overwatch with official ages for all the different characters if you go to the official overwatch website and say take a look at ilari you can see right here that she was born on december 21st she's age 18 you can go back and take a look at genji and see that he is he was born on october 28th and is 37 years old so on and so wasn't this a big deal a few years back wasn't diva like what 16 or something they had to like age her up because of all of the like sus content regarding her Am I crazy? That was a thing, right? So forth. So why is this getting backlash? Well, because if you think about the ages in relation to the lore and the backstories that have been revealed thus far, a lot of these ages don't actually make any sense whatsoever. <laughs> it just course. feels like whoever decided to give these characters the current ages, they just kind of threw numbers out there without really considering what the Overwatch lore has established. And so it's just baffling fans. You know, at the very least, fans had the story and the lore to cling on to. But when even that is being kind of butchered or at least being inconsistent where it just breaks immersion, uh, you know, that, that's when Overwatch really is going to start to lose the fans. And a lot of fans are baffled by this. So this right here is somebody who posted, Heroes in Overwatch 2 now have canon birthdays and ages. And scrolling down, you can see that plenty of people are pointing out that there's some nonsensical elements here, like how the fuck is Kiriko 21 when allegedly she grew up with Hanzo and Genji, and they're like twice her age. And you can see that these issues are widespread enough that tweets like this highlighting how over- This, this seems like not a big deal, right? But like um, Young said, this is the only thing that wasn't shit in Overwatch at the moment. Like the lore, 
people were holding on to this cool law with these characters. If Bethesda, Bethesda, if sorry, I've been playing too much Starfield, and I'm angry at that company as well. But if Blizzard can go in and start changing law and pissing people off, people off of that, nothing's safe, nothing's sacred. Like this game will die again. <laughs> Overwatch did the funniest thing possible, release ages that completely fuck over and destroy the barely their existing lore of the world they have been trying to build for seven years. Tweets like these have gained tons of traction. This one right here has over 44,000 likes, 4.8 million views. And in the replies, people are highlighting some of the issues that they've encountered. Once again, bring up uh, Kiriko, Hanzo, and Genji. Augie here pointed out, no PvE, but thank God we know the age that they are. My favorite part is where Kiriko is 20, Genji is, and this is a mistake, Genji is actually 38, not 28, and Hanzo is 40, but somehow they grew up together. People have even pointed to official images showing Kiriko's past and her training with Hanzo and Genji. Right here is Tom, who tweeted, Kiriko being 21 makes no sense when the Shimada brothers are 37 and 40. It means that both Genji and Hanzo are adults in these pictures, but you can see right here, this is <laughs> Kiriko... And these are the brothers who also look like kids. You know, they're clearly older than Kiriko, but not by like 16 to 19 years. Yeah, Hanzo would be a little bit older than both of them. Genji should be closer to Kiriko. Like, <laughs> not by what? Like, was it 20 years? As you can see right here that these two are still kids, clearly, you know, preteens to teens. If Genji and Hanzo really were 16 to 19 years older than Kiriko, then they would definitely look like adults in these official images which is why people are highlighting this image and asking questions such as i'm supposed to believe that genji is in his <laughs> 20s it's, it's a classic 20 year old right there <laughs> in this picture right here which is a very good point next up we got some lore surrounding mccree and the establishment of the deadlock gang Ooh, okay. which when you look at McCree's official age doesn't make sense in relation to what the current lore has established about him. So right here, McCree was a founding member of the Deadlock Gang mm -hmm, when they mm -hmm. started in 1976, 47 years before McCree was born, <laughs> and then was recruited by Black Watch at the age of 17. Does Blizzard even read their own writing? So he, <laughs> he formed a group 47 years before he was born. Dude, McCree was on that grind so quickly. <laughs> You know, like those jobs you apply for where it's like, oh, start and position, um, you know, uh, foot in the door sort of role. And you have to have te like 10 years of experience in the industry. That's what McCree did. <laughs> a man had a portfolio before he was born. Somebody else added, additionally, Black Watch was formed only eight years before the story's present time, meaning he would be 25 at most. But now, nah, who gives a damn? He's 37 years old, I guess. And Overwatch itself takes place in the mid 2070s. So McCree is canonically three different ages, ranging from 25 to 100 plus, depending on the narrative. <laughs> like, does Blizzard have a lore master? <laughs> I, like, I like how he closed it off. It's like, I hate this game, man. <laughs> oh, dude, so many L's of everything. And to make sure that when they put out official information like character ages, it all lines up or is it that or don't touch it like there was no no issues like i don't understand why they needed to do this it's like they they're getting so much hate that they have to do something for the fans so confirming dates that ruin the law uh, it just makes no sense I, I i just i don't understand why they're bothering doing stuff like this when they could just be i don't know making a good game that they just haven't really been doing a good job of keeping track of things or haven't been invested enough in really fleshing out the lore until maybe more recently with the story missions. Again, this is just so immersion breaking for fans who have been invested in the characters, their backstories, and the overall lore of Overwatch. Now it's hard to tell what's real and what isn't, what's canon, what isn't. Others have also been highlighting how Blizzard officially deems Alari to be the youngest character, but Orisa here is age one versus Ilari's <laughs> age 18. Now Ilari. It's so stupid. It's so dumb. Oh my god. And they're next to each other. Like what? Oh, all right. hold on. No, it's, a, it's an edit here. She's next to, I guess, Kiriko. I guess that's Kiriko's ear. But like, this is stupid, man. <laughs> maybe Arisa doesn't count. Maybe, maybe Blizzard's um, races to the robots like half the characters in Overwatch. Maybe that's part of the lore.
is a human character when it comes to humans. She is the youngest character. This right here is not the biggest deal in the world in the grand scheme of things, but it's just funny seeing it's certain more robotic characters not being acknowledged in terms of age. I don't know. It is what it is. Some people have been pointing that out. But back to a more serious lore discrepancy. It is highlighted right here by Attack of the Fanboys that some fans have highlighted how Sojourn's age has been brought up with some questionable issues. Sojourn's listed age of 47 means her twin sister was only 14 years old at her time of daughter's birth. Or as Twitter user Saved You a Click Video Games put it, Sojourn is 47, which means her sister Valentine must have been 14 when giving birth to Bonnie. Which isn't technically impossible, but has certain implications that I yeah, don't think that a bit Blizzard was going for, given that Overwatch is supposed to be more, you know, like family friendly. Further highlighting discrepancies is the Drifter here, who said that Sojourn's age now suggests her sister had a child when age 12 to 14. Fair wanted to join Overwatch from a young age, but was locked out as it was disbanded before she could join yet somehow she's older than winston and then the shimada bros and kiriko having a 19 year gap so on and so forth Jesus and then beyond Christ. soldier's age implying that her sister gave birth during her early teens there is also this discrepancy pointed out by katie soldier cannot be 47 i'm so sorry but she was allegedly already a military officer when the crisis started 30 odd years ago be so serious with these ages, Blizzard. And while Sojourn did join the military at a young age, Katie did highlight that her being a captain at age 19 is still a stretch, especially because her lore right. says she went to university and then the service for at least a year before becoming a captain, all before the crisis. And then there's the issue of Mercy and Ferris age, who seemingly have a... Did they fuck everyone's age? Like, everyone they put an age down for. It's just... Canonly does not work. Jeez, I thought it was just, I, I read about the, um, the Shimada brothers and Kiriko. Like, I knew that was a thing, but I thought that was it. Like, and that would, eh, it's still stupid. But, uh, one mistake, you know, in terms of lore being ruined, fine. But, like, every character, its character is getting, like, obliterated right now. Five-year age difference based on how officially Mercy's apparently 39 and Farrah supposedly 34. But Art of Farrah exists in Anna's origin story that shows a very, very young Farrah standing with much of the original Overwatch crew. The gap between the two, between Mercy and Farrah, appears much larger than five years. You can see right here that's young Farrah and that's Mercy, who seems pretty grown up at yeah. this stage. Twitter user Save You Jesus. Click also highlighted this in their summary of Kotaku's reporting, saying that Mercy and Farah are five years apart, but Mercy and Farah are shown together during the times of the original Overwatch crew in Anna's origin story. In the art, Farah is depicted as a child, while Mercy looks much older than a five-year difference. I guess one potential explanation is that Mercy had a hell of a growth spurt and just matured very quickly oh, during her that. teenage years. But regardless of the case, uh, people are just uh, not buying it. And so some are speculating that it's almost as if Blizzard never wrote down a concrete timeline and backstory. So stuff like ages gets messed up constantly. Others are highlighting how there have been implications that Mercy is significantly older than Farah. This Twitter user noted how they remember the game mentioning how the healing effect of Mercy makes her age better. So she looks younger than she really is. So yeah, these are just some of the examples okay. that fans have been highlighting. Some are bigger discrepancies than others. Some are bigger deals than others. But either way, there are enough discrepancies or enough inconsistencies that fans feel disappointed at Blizzard's lack of care for the Overwatch lore and its characters' backstories because so much of the value that's placed in Overwatch is surrounding the characters and the lore that people want to get more invested into. And with story missions now being a thing, if they can't keep the lore together and consistent and immersive and make it feel like, you know, they put a lot of thought and care into it, then it's going to drive even more fans away. Numbers surrounding Overwatch 2 have already not been looking great. There's definitely been a downwards trend when it comes to players and, you know, content creation, participation, Twitch viewership, you name it. And now with uh, the lore being compromised by this rather kind of clumsy release of ages that don't align, it's not going to make for better optics surrounding a game whose optics have suffered greatly over the past couple of months and years. I'll be very curious to see he if is, Blizzard yeah. will take the feedback from fans and oh, players and will update no. these ages to be more consistent. But, I mean, the story is one of those things that shouldn't require a patch. You know what I mean? That's at least one thing that... Uh, Blizzard should be able to kind of hold together. It's so disruptive to one's immersion of a whole universe when that universe doesn't seem to know itself. You know what I mean? Doesn't seem to know its characters, its stories, 
and its uh, many historical uh, circumstances and happenstances that allow one to just kind of be able to experience a story without having to worry about uh, just such blatant, uh, I mean, really obvious mistakes, stuff that sticks out like a sore thumb and you don't have to really look that deeply into to see how inconsistent this stuff is. So hopefully Blizzard will address all of this in some way. They're either going to have to retcon some stuff or fix the ages to match existing lore, or they're going to have to just like change up the lore they just, a bit they in some way, shape, or form. Uh, either way, uh, this is just kind of a messy situation for Overwatch's lore, characters, and backstories. But this is one man's take on this whole situation. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on Overwatch 2 releasing the characters' ages and what fans have been saying about the inconsistencies. Is this something that disrupts the experience enough for you where it is a high-priority issue or do you just kind of not care at this stage or you don't think it's that big a deal share your thoughts in the comments below and to be further updated on all things gaming news reviews and discussions stay tuned right here on young yeah i'll see you guys next time young out love it yeah god damn. i know a lot of people will think oh this is just stupid right this is just like ah uh, whatever right but the only people playing Overwatch 2 now, like their main player base, are the hardcore Overwatch players, streamers, like the people that really are dedicated to this series, the people that will give a shit about the lore. And with the PvE being a separate purchase, and they, they need to be convinced people to buy the PvE because it will add to the story, you know, the story missions, you get more lore, you get to see these characters bouncing off each other, seeing the personality. How can you charge people money when you can't even get the story straight yourself like it's just ridiculous and it's not just one they've added these ages in and one character's something way back it just doesn't mesh well with the new age it seems like every character like other than like bastion like has an issue it's ridiculous i i, I don't know what they're doing man it's like they just need to kill this game off at this point I feel like they're going out of their way to just do everything wrong. Even the training, like, hero progression stuff. That's not even all out yet, right? There's, like, four characters you can do that with. That was something that was meant to be launched with Overwatch 2. Uh, it, it, it gets me so mad, because, like I, I've said before, I love this game. I love the last game. I, but I just don't want to play it. I, I, I generally just, every time I log on to it, I get sad and depressed. You know, I've moved on to TF2, which is just a, a meme shit post, but I'm having a much better time messing around in that game with you guys and the community rather than just getting shoveled shit every single update. Uh, uh, it's just depressing, man. And I wonder how Jeff feels. Like, he must be either laughing or crying to see his baby just so neglected oh man so neglected